salesperson here at Surfing Hydrangea Nursery, and we're located at 91 Somerset Road out on Nantucket. And today we're going to talk about the ancient art of pruning plants into whimsical shapes. And today we're working on this uh, boxwood. This is Bucks's Green Mountain. And the first thing to consider when you're building topiary is to choose a plant that is very healthy from the start. You can see that this one's green, there's no funny spots, it's even all the way around. And today we're actually going to make a spiral. So I've chosen a plant here that is roughly conically shaped, so it's going to make it easier for me to form the spiral. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The tools uh, that I use when doing topiary are uh, these really nice Japanese shears. Um, these come from Japan. They're kind of expensive, but you know what, it's really worth it. They hold an edge really, really well, and uh, they're easily sharpened, and that's really important to have sharp tools. The other thing that I like to use actually is just normal kitchen scissors. They're really easy to use, they're really easy to come by, and um, I can use them to do intricate shapes in, in the plants. So, all right, so let's start with our spiral. The first thing, the first thing that we have to do in order to make it a spiral shape is to cut it into a cone. And you can do it by eye if you're really good at that, but um, another way to do it is to use some sticks like this and make a little tripod and then we'll follow the tripod. So I'm going to go ahead and stack these around the plant like this. I'm going to find a point at the top which will obviously be the tip of the spiral when we're done. And you can see I'm working with the plant slightly elevated. If it's in a pot like this it's perfect. It's very easy. Um, obviously if it's in the ground you have to um, make a little adjustments and just find a way that works for you. So I've stacked these around. I'm going to pick them together like this with my fingers and tie them to make a tripod as if, you know, you were going to plant something in the garden, grow some cucumbers or whatnot. And this is just going to help me guide the shape. And then I'll show you what we're going to do here. All right, I've got it basically tied up. And I don't need this extra here. And so now, um, this gives me a basic shape of a cone or a triangle. I'm going to pick it up and push it inside of the foliage slightly because we know um, that creating these shapes is actually subtractive, meaning we're going to remove foliage. We can't put it back on, but by removing the foliage, we'll slowly shape the plant um, the way we want it. And again, in this case, it's the cone. So I've got these in basically the way I want it. Let's stick this one a little further that way. So that's good. Okay, so now you can see I've got a conical shape here, uh, which is perfect. And I'm going to go ahead now with my shears and follow these stakes as my guide, making it pointy at the top and wider at the base. Um, and again, this is my guide, so I'm just going to get started. Oh, again, the other thing about the shears is there's two ways to hold the shears. One way is like this, and you notice the shear has a slight bevel facing the ground. And if I hold the shears and shear that way, I'm cutting in towards the plant. If I hold the shears oppositely, the bevel is then again away from the plant. And it's really important to notice when to use the shears top-wise and when to use them bottom-wise. And right now, I'm actually going to use them top-wise. I want a shear perpendicular to my stakes. And I want to start at the top of the plant, at the tip like this, and work away from me and down. And I'm just gently taking off foliage as I go. And again, I'm just using my little stakes here as a guide, which is very helpful. Again, you can't put plant more leaves on. You can only take them off. So I'm gonna start very, very gently moving around the plant to create my spiral. And at one point, I'll have to remove the stakes that I'm using as a guide here so that I can get it uh, just the way I want it. And I find it's much easier if you move around the plant in the same direction. Um, I am right-handed, and for some reason it's much easier for me to move around the plant, uh, what is that, counterclockwise. And I constantly move counterclockwise. I don't stop and move in the other direction. And what that does for me is it allows me to create an even plane. And once I've created a plane here, I'm just going to follow that all the way around the plant. If I start here, create a plane, stop, and begin to work on another area, they may not meet in the middle. So it's really important to start in one area, work around the plant, and meet back up where you started. 
So I'm going to make one twist around, we'll take a little break, and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. But just watch me really quickly as we move around the plant. So again, I'm holding the shears so that they are actually facing away from the plant. And I'm moving constantly in a counterclockwise direction. I'm starting at the tip, and I'm moving outward away from the plant, like this. And again, you have to change your... You have to change the orientation of your body um, from the orientation of the plant, but that's okay. The most important thing is to keep the shears level and on an even plane, uh, working away again from the plant. And I'll just finish up here and I'll show you what we have. One more time. All right. So I've moved all the way around the plant. I'm going to take these off now. And again, this plant was roughly conical to begin with. We're just evening it up so that we can go ahead and create our spiral. Now we have a plant that is wider at the base. It's more narrow on the top. And this is going to be the perfect beginning for our spiral. And I'll show you how to do that next. Hey guys, I'm back. I just finished up the spiral here. And you can see again, I've made a nice uh, pointy cone like that that is narrow at the top and wide at the bottom. It's pretty even, it's not perfect, it doesn't need to be perfect. You know, topiary is, has an art form has been around for 2,000 years, and during those 2,000 years, I think there's been a lot of different levels of production value, and uh, so as long as it's close, it's gonna, it's gonna be gorgeous, I promise. Okay, so, now we need to form the spiral, and again, if you're really great by eye, you can actually do that without a guide, but I always use a guide, and I'll show you how to do that right now. I take a piece of ribbon, this is flagging ribbon that we use at the nursery. It's just handy because it really contrasts well with the foliage and I can see it really well. And um, we're going to start at the top, at the highest point, and I'm going to tie the ribbon here to the top. And now we're going to make a guide around the boxwood towards the bottom. Um, aesthetically, you're thinking about how wide the tiers of the spiral will be apart. Uh, you're maybe considering that it's more attractive if they're closer together at the top and slightly further apart at the bottom, but more or less, you make a spiral. So here we go. Um, start there, and I'm just going to lay it like this around the plant. And then the nice thing about this method, too, is that you can lay it on there and take a look at it, and you can move it if you don't like it. So. So I'll see what that looks like. It's not bad. I'm going to move this a little bit. I like it when they spiral down at an angle, and I think it's too flat here. This is a little nicer there. So I'm going to do that there. And here I think it's fine. Again, you have to consider it's going all the way around the plant. So watch the whole, each side. Okay, that's not bad. So again, this is going to be subtractive. That means that we're going to remove the part of the boxwood where the ribbon is and allow the part where the ribbon is not to remain. And that's going to make the wider part where the ribbon is is going to be a void and that will expose a spiral shape. Now you can work with it with the ribbon on the plant like this. I find that really difficult because as you begin cutting, you remove the space that's holding the ribbon in place. So I'm going to paint it. Um, this might sound crazy, but I promise it works. I have this spray paint around the house. We're going to remove the area where the paint is anyway. It won't harm the plant, I promise. So now I'm just going to lightly follow around where the ribbon is and give myself a guide. This will just take a second. I'm slowly just going to go around. I'm just lightly marking the foliage. And again, if I don't like this, it's no problem. I can change it at any point. Here we go. All right there, isn't it gorgeous? It's like Christmas. Okay, so we'll take this off. And I'm not sure if the camera picks this up really well, but I can very clearly now see um, the areas that I'm going to remove. It's a perfect line. It's perfect. So. Okay, so I talked earlier 
about the different tools to use for topiary, the large shears and kitchen scissors. I find this beginning part is really easily done with scissors because it's neat and, and it's tight work. So let's try these. And basically what we want to create here is a, a V-shaped groove that goes in towards the center of the plant. So in this case, I'm gonna start in the middle and work back up and back down so that I have a guide that's in the center of the plant and in that way it won't get uneven as I work down. So I'm gonna start in at an angle and cut towards the painted area. And I'm gonna go down and away, down, down, down and away. And then just gently clear that out and just continue. And I'll show you one plane and then we can go back and I'll show you the finished product later on. But here we are, I'm just removing that. And again, you see it happens really quickly as you move around the plant. You begin to form this groove here, which is going to be our spiral. Uh, so let's see, I'm gonna continue here. Um, some other things to keep in mind as I'm working, I'll just mention, are that uh, boxwood is a very forgiving plant. It is evergreen, which is really nice. That's actually very important for topiary. Uh, if you're gonna do all this work to make a gorgeous sculpture, it's really nice to be able to enjoy it all year round. Um, but also, because it's evergreen, the leaves of boxwood are actually very susceptible to drying out or desiccation. And when we make all these cuts, we're forming a little open area on each leaf, and that little open area can actually dry out and die back, which can make it look actually really unsightly in the end. Um, and there's a couple of ways that we can prevent that from happening. The first thing is to shear it early in the season. Um, obviously, this is later in the season now, and that's okay. But if you shear earlier in the season, then uh, the sun isn't out, it's not as strong, and then it won't dry out. The other thing that helps is if you shear on a cloudy day, and after you've done all of your shearing, especially like this, if it's in a pot, it's very helpful. You can move it into the shade for a week or two to form a cuticle over that area that um, you've just cut. Uh, if you can't move it, if it's in the ground and planted, your other option is to spray it with a wilt-proof spray or an anti-desiccant spray. Use the summer um, concentration, don't use the winter concentration, and that will help to cover that cut until it has time to heal over on its own, and then it won't die back and turn brown, which again is very unsightly. All right, so, here we go. I've just begun to start here, and I'm gonna work all the way around the plant towards the bottom, and then I'm gonna work back up towards the top. And uh, when I get the first groove set up, I'll come back and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, guys, so you can see here, I have gone all the way around my spiral here, and I've cut out all of the areas pretty much that were painted. Um, there are some areas where I didn't 100% follow the guide, there are some areas where I thought, oh, it doesn't look so great, it needs wider or more narrow, and I worked on those. Um, but it's fine, I think it looks really great, and I'm gonna continue working on it today, and then the next time you see it, it'll be finished. But here it is, it's a spiral topiary. Again, it's made from boxwood, and this is Brad from Surfing Hydrangea Nursery, 91 Somerset Road on Nantucket.